Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Do you guys wanna spend the weekend with the Watsons? That's what we're gonna do this weekend. But right now, we currently have a little situation on our hands. We have a moose that has been hanging around the property this morning, and we thought he left, so we finally let the dogs out to go to the bathroom, and he came running around the bend this morning down the driveway, knocked the front gate down to chase after the dogs, Thankfully the dogs ran. They did not try to you know, go up to him or antagonize him because moose can do some major damage to your dog. So the pups ran back home, ran to the porch. He's been out here chilling for at least, I would say two hours. And it looks like he is injured. It looks like he has a gouge on his back, at least a seven to eight inch cut on his back. It's not bleeding. It does look fresh, like it's a new wound, but it's not bleeding. I think it just cut through that first or second layer of skin. Maybe he ran under someone's fence, or I don't even know what he did, but somehow he got a big cut on his back. Fishing game is closed because it is the weekend. I don't even think they would come out and do anything for that anyway. I think the cut will heal just fine, but injured animals can tend to be more aggressive. So, uh, sorry, I've got the washer going in the background because it's a sunny day today. Y'all know I do my laundry on sunny days. But Joe is currently outside trying to get this moose to leave because we have things to do today and I can't let the kids out to play or the dogs out and Tina ain't going out with that moose on the property. It is a male, it's a young male, he's like a teenager. Very small, got his little, his little nubs starting to grow, but Joe is out there trying to get him to leave without having to shoot the gun and do anything crazy. We're just trying to get him to leave the property, so let's see how Joe's doing out there. Oh yeah, it's definitely being aggressive. What? Well yeah, he has the gun, just in case, but. Joe says, go on, get out of here. Snowball fight with the moose. Snowball fight with the moose? I think you might lose, Joe. Is he trying to charge you? 
Babe? Uh, you did once over here. Really? Ooh. <laughs> I'm gonna just jump under the truck if she comes at me. Babe, I don't want my truck getting ruined either. So can we, can we just shoot the gun off? He's walking away. We don't want to hurt you, buddy. Can you just go? Because we have chores and stuff we got to get done. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. I feel bad too, honey, but he, he can't be here. This is our home. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he going to go get Joe. Look at him. He said, come here, boy. Oh. 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 My gosh. Well, you guys know we've had moose around here before. But this guy doesn't want to seem to leave and he did try to charge Joe. His ears are pinned back. He's not too happy. Um, I don't know if it's because he's a male, because he's injured. I don't really know, but uh, I do know that there's an Alaska wildlife trooper hotline that we can call for aggressive animals. So if we can't get him to leave, we might have to call them to get him off the property. Oh, he's hiding behind the Polaris. Joe's trying to get him. Ooh. Oh, he said, I'm a, oh, oh, Joe. Oh my gosh. Oh God. Okay. Okay. All right. Joe, be careful. Oh, look at him jump over the... Hi. For all my PETA followers, don't worry, Joe didn't shoot the moose. <laughs> he just shot rounds off to scare it. Unfortunately, ooh, I'm kind of shaking a little bit. Unfortunately, that's where he ran off to this morning when we thought he left, and he didn't. He went around the bend and hid in the forest, and... When we let the dogs out, he came running around the bend and trampled that front gate and tried to stomp the dogs. So I need him to like go, go because you know, the kids play out here. So he needs to be out of the whole vicinity of the cabin before I feel comfortable letting the kids out. <laughs> so, oh, hopefully, hopefully the gun scared him off. We'll see. Is it gone? Yeah. Was it scared? Yeah. Aw, at least it's off the property. Think he's gonna come back? We'll turn up that one road. Oh, probably not. I don't think it liked the, the gun. Good. So, that's good. Then we just shoot off rounds next time if he comes back. Turn around, took off. And if I was charging you, but it just ran around the trailer and moved around. Is it soft? Yeah. <laughs> that's all the moose oh, here we collected. Soft. He's shedding. Oh. So it's just a ton of hair all over the driveway and stuff from him. So it's shedding for the summer? Yeah, well it's spring. Today's April 1st. Yay. April Fools! Well, right now the chicks are in the chicken coop. We've had them in the chicken coop now for a few days. Joe built like a little wooden brooder box to go inside the coop, just because even though it's completely closed in, there's still some areas that Joe needed to close up under the rafters and stuff. So all that cool air is getting in there. So just because they're so tiny, even with the heat lamp, we wanted to get all those things sealed up before we take them out of the brooder box. So that's what we're gonna try to get done today. That way the little chicks can have the whole chicken coop to run around. <laughs> so that's a little birdie box Joe built. Getting all chickies nice and warm. But look at all this space they could have. This whole chicken coop. You guys remember where that box came from? <laughs> that was the river box when we traveled down the frozen river to the remote cabin. <laughs> Do 
Did you just bite him? Yeah, he bit me. That's so weird. Oh, you didn't like that, did you? You guys notice anything different about this area here? If you watch the Q&A video that we did at the remote cabin, we told you guys about the addition that we're gonna be doing on the cabin here. It's gonna end up being the master suite essentially. And then what is our bedroom now in the cabin will be a guest room slash storage pantry room because as you guys know, we have like zero storage space in the cabin. But we came out here with the boys a few days ago and cleared out the mountain of snow that was literally up to the window that way the frozen ground can start thawing even faster. As you can see, we even have little patches of dirt already starting to show through. So we're just trying to get this to melt down and thaw out as fast as we can so that hopefully we can start that bedroom addition sooner than later. Really? One time and then I'm done. You ready? 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 So these are the spots, the holes that Joe has to close up to keep all that cold air from getting into the coop. You guys see that? Mud, lots of mud, which kind of sucks, right? Because the boys kind of like traips it in and out in and out of the house all day long. But I'm really happy to see that things are thawing out and we can see the ground. That means summer is that much closer. They are mountain climbers in the wilderness of Alaska. They're using Joe's ratchet straps. The cliff is much uh, shorter than it looks in the video, I promise. Y'all know I wouldn't let them be rappelling down, no big old cliff. It's just a little snow bank. It looks bigger in the video. But yeah, they're so cute. They have such good imaginations. I love it. You gonna tell me if that moose comes back, Gunner? Huh? You gotta let me know, okay? Oh, Bradley. Is that all you care about? A lot of people ask if we're allowed to shoot the moose when they're on our property. Um, the answer is yes, if it's moose season, but it is not moose season. So we cannot shoot the moose, unless obviously if it was a situation where our lives were being threatened, but nope. So we just have to scare them off the best we can. And obviously if it became a bigger issue, like the one this morning, if it wouldn't leave, we would have to call the wildlife troopers to come and handle that. I think that's gonna look fine, Joe. Well, I don't look fine. Yeah. Right. Who cares? It's our chicken coop. Right? We make it how we want, Joe. Did you see my ladder fell over when I was on it? And you scratched it. Oh my plastic came off the ladder.
Are you guys in a band? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of scratch. Mountain climbing right. band members, huh? I like it. Ready, Mom? Hit it. This is mine. A one, two, three, four. Obviously, we have a lot more work still to do on the chicken coop. You know, we don't need anything like nesting boxes or anything like that yet. These chicks will not start laying for five to six months, so we don't have to worry about that, but eventually we are going to finish the underneath of the chicken coop and close that with a really good predator-proof wire. And then we're also gonna build an outside chicken run for the chickens eventually too. But for now, they're super small. They need to be kept warm, so this is gonna do for now. I'm really glad we got them out of the brooder box because the boys haven't been able to really come in here and handle the chicks because they couldn't reach down into that box. Um, and I want them to be able to handle them so that the chickens are used to people touching them. I don't want them to be scared and skittish. So now the boys can come in here whenever they want and they can hold them and love on them and the chicks are <laughs> fluttering around. They seem to be really happy to have a bigger space. thermometer and we have the other wireless it's wireless and we have the other part of it in the cabin so we can keep an eye on the temperature in here for the chicks because uh, they're different ages they weren't supposed to be they're different ages and some of the younger ones still need to be kept pretty warm especially at night the temperatures are still dropping so it's nice I just keep it on my nightstand and at night if I get up to use the bathroom or something I can roll over and just check on that temperature and make sure that the, the, the heat lamp hasn't gone out because sometimes your bulb will go out or whatever and if that happens they could freeze so that's what that little white thing is just a thermometer <laughs> you're a chicken herder oh yeah I'll herd chickens Look at that little one. He's like, oh, that's, that's the good spot right there. Look at him. He's like, I'm not moving. I'm going to stand right under this red light. <laughs>
sugar, Callan? Which one's sugar? Which one? The black one? Oh, she just flew all the way across the coop. to keep her wings shut. There you go. Good job. Little chicken keeper. Hi, baby. Hi. Alright guys, so we're doing a little reno project here in the kitchen. As you just saw, we've removed everything from the kitchen. So what kind of prompted this idea, other than the fact that I like things to look old and rustic and I hate drywall, you guys know that, <laughs> is that I am going to have Joe install this little pendant light. Can you see that? Yeah. This little pendant light above the kitchen sink. So. The lighting in the cabin is not the best. It's it's on the dim side, but I prefer ambient lighting. I don't like fluorescent lights. They give me headaches and I just like things to look calmer and warmer. And so the problem is I've got a one of those warmer light bulbs in the kitchen, but when I'm doing dishes or I'm doing anything on the countertop, cutting vegetables and things like that, my shadow kind of hangs over and I, I, there's just not good lighting. So we're gonna hang this pendant light above the kitchen sink to give a little bit of better lighting in here. But in order to do that, Joe's gonna have to rewire some things up here in the ceiling. And then he got to thinking and brought the idea to me, which he already knows I would have been totally down with it. How about we just pull out all of the drywall off of this ceiling here in the kitchen and expose the natural beams that are already running across the top. So the idea is that you have like the, the open rafter showing and then we're gonna put in some planking in between those beams to make it look more rustic, more woodsy. So right now it'll just be exposed beams with the, dry, uh, with the plywood, but we're gonna be getting some wood to finish this look and I think it's gonna look super cute and it'll look really nice to go with kind of the cozy cabin theme that we have here at the main cabin. So with that being said, Things are about to get really dirty and dusty up in here. Here's the man himself. We had such a great idea, Joe. Oh, look, you're representing. Home free Alaska, baby, woo woo. Okay, that's no. But just think of how much we will appreciate it even more being that we're the ones doing the work. <laughs> I think it's gonna look super cute. How about you take the drywall down and then I'll do the wood stuff. Um. I I just but I like to I like to watch you work, Joe. You look so cute when you work, especially with that ball peen hammer. <laughs> Are you sure that you know what's up there? How, first of all, how do you know what's up there? 
Because you haven't seen what's up there. What if, mm. what if there isn't beams like big enough that we're thinking, Joe? There's no going back. You would have to put up all new drywall. I ain't putting drywall. <laughs> yes, you are. <gasps> You're just gonna break it? Oh, I'm scared. It's too strong. Joe, that is thick drywall. Oh, Whoa, look at like that. Half inch. I don't know, maybe we shouldn't do this. <laughs> You're gonna have to get the ball peen. Get out. Show them what a ball peen's really for, Joe. You can do it. Come on, put your back into it. Oh, oh I can break it. I just don't wanna make a mess. It's gonna make a mess no matter what, babe. Oh, wow. What? You're making me nervous? Babe, that's... I'm just starting to feel maybe this is not safe, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> I think it's going to be a mess no matter what we do, babe. Oh, look, the cat. It's Asher. <laughs> I know. You would think you'd be scared to be under there. Such a weirdo. <laughs> Asher. Hey. Excuse me. It's our little troublemaker, aren't you? Asher's the troublemaker. Yes, you are. We started letting them outside onto the porch and they love going out there, especially this guy. But you guys, those cute little chickadees, we have a lot of those chickadees and I have a feeling like there's gonna be a lot of them that are dead because he is like cracked out on the porch looking at them. You know how the cats make that <laughs> weird sound? Yeah, he is cracked out on the porch looking at those birds like, let me have one. You know how kitties bring you treats? dead mice, things like that. I think Asher is going to be bringing dead chickadees, which is going to break my heart, but we shall see. A little Rusty is always just the lover, hanging out, checking everything out. Oh, Rusty. Doesn't like he doesn't like going outside. It scares him. But Asher loves being outside. That is so funny. They like the plastic. be some beams. Cool. All right, so we've got beams. This is what I want here. And right now we've got the plywood, but our, our thought is to put planking across there. So it'll look really super cute and rustic when we're done with it. So the idea is that we are going to do this to this section too, eventually. But we just want to do the inside of the kitchen first to kind of see how it looks. And that was the part that really needed to get done right now because that's where the light's going to go. But my plan is to have this whole entire kitchen area from here back be all the open planking. Good to see. 
bunch of flies up there? Ew, how'd they get in there? Disgusting! Like a hundred flies just fell off of that is so gross. How did how did they even get up there, Joe? Oh, it was like fly legs and stuff everywhere. Ew. Oh, they're even in the plastic. I'm gonna go out and check on these chicks really quick. Just make sure that they're good. You know, sometimes you get these little, oh, excuse you, Bradley. You get these little chicks, and if you get one that gets away from the group, we've actually had it happen in the far, on the farm in Virginia, and they'll die. They, uh, it's crazy, you would think they would just stay with the, the group, but sometimes they kind of wander off and they can't find their way back, and they get really cold, so I wanted to make sure they're doing okay. And we still need to build some stairs. <laughs> I'm standing on about four feet of snow right now. Stay. I'll put a camera in here. And I went to check on the chicks and I couldn't see anything. It's because it fell down. No wonder. Oh, it's a little chilly, but it's probably nice and warm under that lamp. Oh yeah, that's nice and warm under there. All right, all right. I'll leave you be. Get back under the light. <laughs> A big old coop for some tiny little chickens. Can we come in? We want some chicken nuggets. Stay. Stay. <laughs> I'm not throwing the stick, Bradley. Come on, it's cold. Let's go inside. All right, well, here it is. All the drywall is down. The beams are exposed. So it took Job maybe an hour and a half to get all that down, and then we cleaned everything up. Super happy that we put the plastic up because the drywall dust would have been all over the cabin. So tomorrow morning, we are gonna go grab some supplies so we can start doing the planking on the inside. We're also gonna get a good sealant to seal the beams because right now they're not sealed with any kind of finish or anything like that.
right there. Well, good morning, friends. We are heading out to get some wood to finish the kitchen project. I'm gonna take the boys up to a local hardware store to get the remaining wood that we need to finish that cute little rustic look that we're going for in the kitchen.
right guys, we made it back from the store and we are gonna start the wood planking on the ceiling here in the kitchen. I think we all have a little bit of a food coma from Subway. <laughs> Subway sandwiches are like seriously big. You just get a six inch and it's just like a whole lot of sandwich, but it's always fun. That is the only place to eat pretty much up there and the boys love it and so do we. So stopped and got lunch, but now we're back home and we're gonna see how this looks. Hopefully it turns out the way that I envisioned. This is what I deal with on a daily basis around here. If Joe's gone missing, if Joe's gone missing, it's because he is outside digging snow tunnels or playing Nerf guns with the kids. And apparently the broom was a machine gun and the roll of plastic was a rocket launcher. So we're putting these boards in here because the tongue and groove is actually gonna go on them. And the reason for that is we need this little bit of a space up there so that we can fit all the wiring for the electrical and the lights and stuff up in the rafters or else there wouldn't be any room to put them in there and there wouldn't be any way to hide them. So that's why those boards are going up. I'm loving the way that it looks. So we're gonna be staining this because obviously they're two very different colors with the tongue and groove and the beams that were already in place. But I think once it's all stained, I think it's gonna look really cute. And it's amazing how much more open this room feels with that drywall gone. It makes the ceilings taller and it just makes it look so much bigger in here. Hey babe, nice shot. What did you say? Nothing. You can't trick me. Did you just say you're making a fart box? What? Joe, I'm not helping you. I'm serious. If that's what you're gonna do in there, I'm done. What are you talking about? Uh-uh, I'm not. That's just like the shower. That's why I don't shower with you. You're a liar. You don't shower with the shower's like. Well, working. before we got here. We had a bigger shower and I quit showering with you because you always make it a fart box. Oh, Joe. It's like love through the plastic. No, it's like... Oh, I love you even though I can't see you. Joe, look, it's like the dating show. I can't see you on the other side of the wall. We just have to know each other and get to know each other like without seeing each other. Um, I'm 22. And I'm like 113 pounds, and I really like guys with big muscles. <laughs> Are you still there? Hello? 
Babe, stop sighing. Let me see you do this and not sigh. <laughs> oh, okay. What? Mm -mm. I think you need to see a dentist. Remember Ace Ventura? What, the asparagus? Yeah. But now that those are in place, we should be able to start putting the tummy. But now that those are in place, we, but now that those are in place, we should start. It always happens. Is that funny, Joe? It's all right. Let's do it again. But now that those are in place, we should be able to get the tongue and groove going. No.